Okay, so today we have this linear algebra problem. Now, I'm not sure how notation for you is like, so I'm going to clarify some things. I'm not sure that they are universal. First of all, the uh, sum of functions is defined to be a function such that the value of it is just the sum of uh, values of functions uh, for that argument. So, so we have two functions, phi and psi. Uh, phi plus psi of x is phi of x plus psi of x. Okay, and uh, another thing, uh, LFE is uh, the set of all linear mappings from F to E. Okay, now that I got that out of the way, let's begin. Let's begin with the first part. We have phi that is a linear mapping from E to F. Have the space symbol of phi linear mappings from F to E, such that it's composed with phi is zero. And uh, to prove that phi is surjective, then ML of phi is equal to zero. Okay. Now, working on that, if phi is surjective, then, uh, okay, let's know that that's the first part. Uh, first, image of phi is equal to f, then let's work with the image of the composition of phi with psi. Psi with the phi is going to be Psi of uh, image of uh, phi. Now that's going to be psi of uh, f. This, since f is literally the domain of it, it's just going to be image of psi. Okay, now let's review uh, this equality. Let's take the image on both sides. What we have is image of uh, psi is equal to zero because the image of zero is zero. Okay. And well, since image of psi is zero, then zero yeah, psi is a zero mapping. And that's evident because uh, if it wasn't a zero mapping, then we have some argument that uh, Psi of uh, that argument is going to be not zero, and then it would be included in the image. Okay. Uh, now on the next part. Suppose uh, phi from e to f is an injective. I have to show that the set of left inverse of phi is a coset in the vector space L of e over in, well, no, ML phi in L of e, include that the left inverse of phi is include determinative and only if phi is surjective. Okay, let's begin with saying that uh, exists he such that uh, he composed uh, with uh, phi it's gonna be the uh, identity mapping uh, I'm not sure if this notation is like known. Uh, e of x is equal to x. This is the identity mapping. Okay. That is because phi is injective. That's why there's a lot of hands tied inverse. Okay. Now, since we have the left inverse of phi, uh, we can go ahead and take the call set that contains it. Let's call it call set t. Be the set uh, psi plus he and psi belongs to ML phi. Okay, now let's work with this general notation uh, psi plus he and uh, let's say that psi belongs to M L phi. Then we are going to do is we're gonna compose this with phi, and this is gonna be interesting because we have psi which equates to like well zero of string composition is phi, and e which is the left inverse of phi. 
Now, these are the way we define the, the sum of functions. Uh, so this could be psi of phi plus he of phi. Now, that's going to be just zero, so now so we have to know that uh, this is q of phi, which is the identity mapping. Therefore, psi plus he is a left inverse. And therefore, uh, an entire call set like that, t, is the law of inverses of phi. So now what we have to show is that uh, left inverse of phi is include determinative and only if phi is rejective. Now, thing is, this set is gonna have only a singular element only under one condition under that condition that uh, psi uh, is singular well the specific sets we're not saying that there isn't another code set that could uh, theoretically contain uh, something else but uh, if we show that psi is singular only if uh, phi is surjective, then we already show that there is in the case where phi is surjective. And if phi is surjective, and as we have said already, phi is injective, then phi is an isomorphism, and the inverse is uniquely defined. So the only thing that we have to show is that it's not going to be uniquely determinative, phi is surjective. Okay, well, let's go ahead and actually do that now. Uh... Let's say uh, image of phi is not f, so phi isn't surjective. And then let's go back to uh, this equality. Let's take the uh, image in both sides. image actually not the image let's take the kernel and well uh the kernel psi composed with phi is equal to uh, the kernel of the zero mapping which is just gonna be e okay now let's actually work with this now the kernel of uh, psi composed with uh, phi. Now, thing is, uh, phi has some image, and well, we have this equality, and uh, essentially this implies that the kernel of uh, psi composes phi is e therefore the kernel of psi is supposed to be the image of e not e the image of phi sorry i'm just uh stuttering a little uh that is uh well true because uh for every element that we pick and insert into phi, we get some value, and then we stuff it inside of psi, and we get zero. So this should be true. And uh, well, I think yes, that implies that kernel of psi is not equal to f. Uh, oh well. Now, mind you, uh, we were to sort of return a little. Terminative and only if phi is surjective. Now, this therefore implies that psi is not the zero mapping. Or, well, rather, not necessarily, because I have made a sort of mistake here. 
kernel of say is going to be super set of image of Fay. So every such psi matches, and zero included, but not necessarily zero. So uh, exists psi not equal to zero. And since we know that a zero always belongs to ML phi, and uh, Psi belongs to um, L of phi, then the elements are not singular. But this implies that the image of phi is not equal to f. If image of phi is equal to f, then it's surjective. M L of phi is equal to zero. So multiple things are matched. First of all, this closet is going to have only one inverse. Uh, for two, it's going to be an isomorphism. Well, phi, so it will have a unique inverse. I'm kind of overcomplicating things, but uh, I think you get the point and everything. So uh, that's it for today. Bye.